Hello. In this video, we will show how to integrate any Python customization as part of a design kit, so-called PDK. In one of the previous videos, we have seen that one can point to any Python customization by using a user add-on. As a reminder, one can achieve this through the main ADS menu, App Manager, click on Add User Add-on, and then pointing to the init Python file, enable it at the ADS startup, and then one will be able to show the customization that the, the end user has implemented through the menu of interest and then display the custom GUI. I will advise to refer to the previous video related to this QT Designer UI customization as needed. In this video, instead, one may not like to necessarily add uh, this menu through the App Manager manually, but instead will like to be implemented as part of a PDK. And this is what we will see in this video. Here we will, we can see actually two of the key steps, which is first from the config file, add a dedicated variable, which we will do in a minute. And through the main Python file, refer to the add-on location through a function called setup library. Let's do it together. From a basic uh, PDK installation, which is actually some files that will be provided separately. Here, here is our structure. So if we look at the config file, pretty empty at this stage, classical one, but we will here use a dedicated function allowing to point to our Python customization to this variable. And then, by the way, here we can see that no customization is available yet because we will enable it through the PDK. Then there is the main Python PDK file that we will look into. And to save some of your time, we will start from a file where everything has been already defined. But here I will try to comment what's in there. As mentioned, uh, through Python, one can define the location of the add-on PDK, assuming that this has been done beforehand, and we will point to it uh, within the PDK through this setup library function. One needs to necessarily call it as is. Within this function, you can refer to any uh, function that you like, but for now, we will specify the add-on and its location. First, we specify the parent uh, path, and then not necessarily something to do, but this is, has been done this way uh, in this PDK structure. We specify that the add-on, Python add-on, will be located in a folder DE add-ons as part of the PDK. So if we go one level up, we go to the add-on, DE add-ons, and this is where we will put our Python files. So let's do it from um, the previous video we have seen, uh, where we created some Qt Designer add-on. We can copy those files, important files, and put it in our add-ons location of the PDK. Then for the three following lines, what we do is that 
we specify uh, the add-on location and add it to uh, the memory uh, allowing the PDK to understand what to do with our add-on. So last but not least comment, uh, it will, it's advised to also define a shutdown library as defined here, allowing once you refer or you open any other workspace to unload uh, this customization. So once you have done that, let's use and load our uh, PDK. So manage libraries, look for the add-on library files. And currently we can go into my PDK example where there is a lib.devs. So let's open it. It has been loaded here. And as you have seen here, now we have our customization run netlist as we did before uh, through the add-on mechanism. Here we can look for our netlist file and we can launch the simulation. Here simulation is completed showing that we are now able to load any Python customization through the PDK mechanism instead of the user add-on app manager of ADS. As a wrap up, now one has two ways to load any customization, Python customization, either through an app manager, if one likes prefers. However, people also sometimes would like to do this through a PDK mechanism, which is what has been shown in this video. Hope this to be helpful to you. Bye for now.